Hi class, I'm Robert Lopez and today I want to show you how to access uh, the KMZ files for Google Earth and these KMZ files are available through our uh, our book provider uh, WW Norton but I've put them here on our module so looking here at our canvas page you'll want to go to modules you'll see at the top here we'll have course materials and you'll see we'll have these Google Earth resources so you want to click on that Okay, this will take you to a link that goes to uh, Norton Publishing. So here we want to download the GeoTours file. So you click on this link down at the bottom here. So you'll click on there and it'll take us to um, the Essentials of Geology 5th Edition uh, Stephen Marshak page. So the GeoTours workbook. Uh, and so you'll see that the way we access the workbook is through our, our modules page in Canvas. And they are, there I provide the quizzes, which are the, the tutorials uh, that give you instructions on what to do in, in, um, in Google Earth using these KMZ files. So uh, you'll see that this discusses a little bit about this. You can, you, know, you can actually explore this a little bit more. But we're going to download this file here, uh, where it says download this file. This would be the KMZ file. So we'll click on that. And you'll see that it's this um, KMZ file. And so, yes, we want to choose, so we'll choose Google Earth right here. Okay, open that, and we'll say OK. And this should import the, the KMZ file, the GeoTours KMZ file, into my places. So here it is. It just showed up right there. And now we'll have access to the files required uh, for the quiz. So in fact, let's take a look at the quiz. So we'll go to our, back to our Canvas page, now that I already have the GeoTours KMZ file loaded. And on our page here, we we'll want to go to Modules. And you want to go to our first uh, lesson plan, which is Geology Intro, Intro Prelude Chapter 1 Assignment. And you can see down here we have the Lab Geo Tour Worksheet Earth and Sky. So you'll see that each week we'll have a Geo Tour assignment. Now it's either A, B, C, or D. This is, this is A, Earth and Sky. So we'll click on that. But let's do a preview here. Uh, see, we want to go to the Google Earth website or to our Google Earth. We want to uh, uh, have the KMZ file. We've already done that. So here you can access, here, access the file here as well. And here we're going to answer these questions, right? So uh, to do this, right, we want to explore using Google Earth, uh, Earth and Sky. So select Google Sky by clicking the, the selection Sky to turn on the Sky databases. Um, the image, so um, in problem 1A, uh, so so for that one, we look at the Crab Nebula. So we'll go here, and we want to go to our KMZ file. So we want to open this up. Here's our Geo Tours. We want so we want to oh, we want to click on the down arrow to see all the different worksheets A, B, C, D. So we're doing A. So let's just click on that one, and we'll open it up here. We'll click this down arrow so we see the problems. All right. So there there are, there is going to be the problems we'll be doing. And so remember the first thing they want us to before we start problem one. They want us to click the sky. So if you look up here, uh, where the image of Saturn, we're going to switch between Earth, sky, and other planets. So right now we're on Earth. So let's click sky. Okay. And so it's going to show us some constellation. But now let's look at the questions that we have here in the double click the place mark in problem one. All right. So let's do that. So here's problem one. We'll click on that. And it should take us out to the Crab Nebula. Something about the Crab Nebula. Very he heavy elements formed during a supernova event. Remember, uh, anything greater than atomic number 26. So remember, inside a star is nuclear fusion will fuse uh, 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 lighter elements to make heavier elements up to iron, atomic 20, number 26. But in a supernova event, here we see the rapidly expanding shell of gas ejected into space from an explosion in 1054 common era. Uh, this shell is called the Crab Nebula. So a supernova event, what happens is that that implosion and then then the shattering of material into space is where you're forming atoms heavier than iron and also anything like oxygen calcium carbon that was formed in uh, nuclear fusion of the star now gets all sent out into space and remember this becomes the seeds uh, for planets or planetary systems and so uh, on our question here 
Let's go back to our questions. It says, the Crab Nebula is located about 6,000 light years from Earth. At the present length of its long axis is 11 light years, right? So it takes 11 light years to travel uh, 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 um, across this nebula, which is 9.5 trillion kilometers. That's one light year. What is the length of the long axis in kilometers? So this is just a math problem, right? So you're taking um, 11 light years, 11 times 9.5, right? So we'll do 11 times 9.5 gives us 104.5 trillion kilometers. So there it is right there. So that's just a simple math problem. Uh, for question two, to answer this one, we want to uh, do the same thing. Select Google Sky. We have that. So the Crab Nebula represents a violent supernova explosion of a once massive star, which was likely a third or fourth or even later generation star. Heavy elements with atomic weights larger than 26 were, were likely generated during, the, during this explosion. Which element probably formed in the supernova? So again, this is where we know that gold is, uh, is heavier than iron, uh, has a greater atomic number. We know all these are smaller, so gold would be the one there. So that's um, something about the supernova event. And now uh, for this one, we want to go to problem two. And still, we want to have the sky turned on here. And then we're going to look at some uh, spiral galaxy here, which resembles our Milky Way. And we want to figure out whether this thing is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's click on problem two. We'll double click here. And it should take us to this rotating spiral galaxy. Messier uh, was an early astronomer who charted these blurry objects in the sky. And he gave them numbers. So uh, based on how this is spinning, it looks like it's spinning clockwise right spinning clockwise so on our question here we would say it's spinning cl clockwise and uh, let's see this question four here so now we want to uh, to answer the questions uh, explore google earth select earth now we want to go back to earth on that saturn icon and this will leave the sky view and enter the earth view and we want to use a ruler tool so i want to show you how to use this ruler tool we look at this crater here i think this is up in canada so let's do this this would be for problem 3a here problem 3a so we'll select earth and then we'll pro do problem 3a double click on that and that should take us up to a crater up in canada so here we go zooming in and there it is and so ideally what they want you to do, they want you to measure from place mark to place mark, right? So they see there's two three A's. And so the, the, the trick with using, using the ruler tool is up at the top, you'll see this ruler, you click on that. And then before we do the measurements, we want to do, um, I think they want it in kilometers. Let's double check. Yeah, they want it in kilometers. So we can see here that we, we already have it in kilometers. So it's in kilometers and we're going to do some math Lame. So we'll start off here. We'll click at this first one and then, then we can move this around and we're going to go all the way to and click again over here. So going across this crater, we got about 75 kilometers. Let's see if that's something that we have here. Yeah, there it is, 75 kilometers. So we, that's our answer there. So one of the things about the ruler tool is wherever you click, you'll see it's going to start over again. So once you click, you got to click again and then you got to clear it so you can start again. So um, that's what, and then you can change this from kilometers to inches to meters to centimeters. So you can do a variety of different uh, units there. To get rid of the, the ruler tool, just click the, the close box here. Okay. So let's see what else we have here. So for question five, again, we'll use the ruler tool to determine the present diameter of, of, of upheaval dome. So upheaval dome was problem 3B. So we'll do problem 3B, and this will take us somewhere in uh, the western United States. Oh, and there is a dome, right? And so note that there's a 3B here and a 3B there. So, and then in this case, they want us to measure again in kilometers. So we'll get our ruler tool. We, got, we have kilometers, and we'll click here, and then we'll click here, and we got the... 4.6 kilometers, right? So let's clear this and close that. 4.6 kilometers. See what that's uh, well, about five kilometers. That's so we'll just go to that one there. At Meteor Crater in northern Arizona, where we're going to figure out the distance between the two place marks here, and it's about 1.13. The options are given us up here was 1.2. And um, let's go to question eight. So question eight is going to kind of use some information 
from Meteor Crater and the, the crater we looked at earlier uh, in this Manicogwin crater, which was 75 kilometers, right? So, and we saw that that crater is 75 kilometers, whereas Meteor Crater was 1.2 kilometers, right? So looking at this question eight, they want us to make a ratio, right? So what we'll do, we'll go over here to the document camera. So we're gonna figure out the ratio for a 40 meter asteroid or comet for meteor crater created a 1200 meter crater. At Manicagua, we have a 70, 75,000 meter, which is the same thing as saying 75 kilometers, right? We want to know what, so basically we're going to do some cross multiplying. You know, we're going to solve for x. And x here is going to simply equal uh, the 40 meters times the 75,000 meters, and we're going to divide that by 12, um, 1,200 meters, right? And we'll see what we get there. So looking at our calculator, So that's going to equal 2,500 meters. So that's the size of the comet or asteroid for Manicagua here. So let's look at what we have on here. And for question eight, we see that sure enough, there it is right there. So that's how we're going to calculate that. This next part is going to ask us to look at this website. We're going to enter some data. So some of the data we have is the distance to the impact is 1,000 meters. We, uh, the diameter of the crater, we figured it was, uh, uh, the meter was about 2,500 meters, 2.5 kilometers. And then we could do a couple of trials, ice and iron. So let's go to this Arizona website here. And so distance to impact, we're going to do the 1,000 kilometers. And then we want to do uh, projectile diameter, we just said it was 2,500 meters city in terms of density we want to do an we'll do trial one which would be the comet right so um ice right here trial one and then what else do they want to do and the impact was 20 kilometers per second 20 kilometers per second and a 45 degree angle and then what's the last thing here and the target was crystalline rock so let's chris and so we'll calculate the effects and so uh, for this one, so based on the numbers, it looks like a, this is for the iron, the iron meteorite would produce a crater of 49 kilometers in diameter, almost a thousand feet deep for the iron. And for the icy, you only got 22 kilometers and 750 meters deep. So obviously the iron meteorite would give you the bigger crater or the icy comet produces a smaller, right? So that's what we're looking for there. So anyhow, those are some examples uh, using the Google Earth. Mm -hmm.